Hello and welcome to Mrs. Brown's Stitching School at Hope Corner Farm. I'm Mrs. Brown and today we are going to be creating a sandwich block for a rag quilt that features a half square triangle top. Now if you want to learn how to make this half square triangle block, I have another video tutorial uh, that is available to learn how to create this, so I'm not going to spend the time going over how to make this block. Um, what you do need to know is that you have essentially three pieces to this sandwich. For your bottom piece of bread or whatever you would like, I have a six inch by six inch block of fabric. Reg quilts work best with flannel fabric. Now I am lucky in that the fabric that I am going to use for this one, it doesn't really have a good side at all. Both sides look exactly the same. Now if you had a fabric that had a definite right side and a definite wrong side, you would have to be aware of where the right and the wrong side were facing. In fact, if this were my backing piece, I would be placing it like this with the right side facing the mat and the wrong side facing up. But mine doesn't have that, so I'm just gonna place this here. So there is my backing piece. Now I take my batting piece, which is cut at five inches by five inches. We cut this an inch smaller because I want to be able to sew a half inch seam and not have this batting poking out or poking through the seam. Because with a rag quilt, we're gonna clip these seams so that they kinda of get a worn look to them. And you don't wanna be able to see that batting in those seams. So that's why the batting is cut at five inches. Now, I take my half square triangle top, and it's gonna seem counterintuitive, but the seam needs to be on the top facing out because again, we're gonna clip this, se this seam to get that worn look. If this were a traditional quilt, you would usually have that seam allowance facing the inside of the block, but because it's a rag quilt, we want that seam allowance facing to the outside because it gives a nice look to your rag quilt. So we have our sandwich put together there. Now before I sew it, I like to put a couple of pins in because that offers me some stability and some peace of mind knowing that my fabrics and my battings are not gonna move around on me when I go to sew. So we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and the first seam we're, or first seam we're gonna sew is right down the diagonal here, right down in that seam allowance. And we're doing what's called a stitch in the ditch. What that means is we're stitching right here in that seam crack right there. So that way our stitching is almost hidden. With this block, we're gonna essentially be sewing an X with the X going down this diagonal and then across this diagonal as well. That X keeps that batting from moving around inside of that block when you wash it. Um, so let's head to the sewing machine and sew right down this diagonal. And then we're also going to sew across this diagonal. One thing to keep in mind before we head to the sewing machine, I like to start my stitching in about a half an inch from each of the corners because that will keep those seams free when we go to sew it together as a rag quilt. So again, we're starting our stitching in about a half inch from the corner there, basically right at the corner of where that batting begins. So let's head to the sewing machine and sew this up. All right, so we're over at the sewing machine. I am ready to start. Again, I have my needle lined up with the diagonal seam there so that it's gonna basically stitch right down the middle of that seam. Again, I'm starting in a half inch from the corner and I'm just gonna start here. So I'm gonna start with sewing, take a couple of stitches. Then I am gonna do a back stitch because that will help to secure my seam and keep things from coming unraveled when we wash them. So now we're just gonna stitch right across this block, right down the middle of that seam, right in the ditch as they call it. When I get to about a half inch away from the corner, I do a little back stitch and then go forward again. And then I'm gonna take my block out from underneath my needle. Now, again, we're sewing an X across this block. So you can draw the diagonal line across here. I usually just eyeball it and it turns out pretty good. But again, I'm starting in a half inch from the corner. 
I'm going to start, take a couple of stitches and then back stitch. And then I'm going to sew across. Notice I'm keeping my pins in um, just for stability here. Now when I get close to that pin, I do stop and I pull it out just because I've had too many needles broken by pins. So I'm going to keep sewing across. Now when I get close to this seam allowance, I do want to help and just kind of guide and make sure that that seam fabric goes right underneath of my presser foot. And then I'm going to sew, keep sewing across here. Okay, when I get close to my pin, I'm going to stop, pull it out, and then I'm going to continue on until I get to a half inch away from that corner there. So there I'm pretty close to a half inch. I'm going to do a little back stitch, go forward again, and I am done sewing. So we'll head back over to the cutting board so you can see this completed sandwich block. Okay, so we have our sandwich block completed. If you look closely, you can see my diagonal line across here. Now I would trim all of my threads here too before I would sew it together in the quilt. If you flip it over on the back, you can see that X. Normally I try to have a thread that matches my backing color, but I did it in navy blue just so you could see that X a little bit better. Again, not going all the way to the corners. We're stopping about a half inch in from each of the corners and there's an X across my block. Now one thing to keep in mind before you start sewing, you want to make sure everything is laying flat. Otherwise you might have an issue like this if you don't make sure everything's laying flat before you start stitching. And then if you have something like this, you're going to have to become best friends with the seam ripper, which I hate using. I always say if you see me with a seam ripper in my hand, you better run because I'm not in a good mood. So just make sure everything's laying flat and the way it should before you start sewing and it's going to save you a lot of headache in the long run. So for my rag quilt that I'm making, I would need to repeat this process for creating these sandwich blocks 57 more times. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, check out my tutorial for my half square uh, triangle rag quilt. Uh, have a good day and many blessings. Thanks.